The initial 1.0 builds were dominated by two armor pieces, Renaplo's arms and Nargakuga belt. If you played Gunlance, there was almost a 100% chance that you would be using these unless you wanted to feel yourself different. Another almost must include armor pieces were Baroth legs, Diablo's chest and Master Slash Chandler's helm. And now. Update 2.0 has rendered every 1.0 build totally obsolete. And there are two reasons. I bet you can guess the first one. Bagel Goose armor is a revolution in itself. I could reduce this video to just just the good chest pieces that aren't bagels, tell you to use one of those instead of bagel and get done with it. But this is only possible because of the second reason. We got craftable decorations for virtually any skill in the game. Before the update, it was almost impossible to do a build with protective polish, good luck, critical boost or weakness exploit without a charm that featured at least two points. But this is no longer. And still, there are armor pieces out there that compete against the mighty bagel set, equaling it in value or even surpassing it. All you have to answer is how much do you value guard 3. A lot of monster attacks can be equally guarded with guard 1 than 3 and you can replace the traditional guard with guard edge for the rest of the attacks. Guard 3 is not an impressing deep lay necessity. These equal value armor pieces also can be useful for complementing a good charm you got. Imagine you got an impossible artillery 2 charm, evade extender 2 charm with one slot. Suddenly, bagel's legs aren't that good to you. Before starting the listing, these are the best skills for gunlets. Artillery, I don't going to bother explaining why you should be using artillery. Next. Load up, essential for normal and wide. But also pretty useful even in stake lance where you only normally spend a few shells before staking. Evade extender, godlike movement booster. This is not meant to be a defensive skill, this is meant to help you reach the monster or blind spot it. At the very least equip one point, the improvement is huge there. Two points is adequate for long or builds using blast dash since long distances will be blast dashed and you only need this for close movement or sidestepping attacks. Three points make a difference but that is now a personal election since you will be pressed for build room. I used to take it on builds based on pure shell damage because there are little more to pick. Guard is free now thanks to bagel armor. You will have at least one point for sure whenever you intend or not. Guard skill effect of reducing the knockback of attacks only improves at levels 1, 3 and 5. You want to avoid level 2 or 4 because it is wasteful. You may be forced into guard 2 depending on your bagel setup. Guard loses a lot of value in builds without guard reload. In these, Wirebug Whisperer is more useful because it will allow you to have guard edge ready at any time. You can cancel a lot of attacks recoveries with guard edge making them safer. Guard 5 is very much monster dependent. And remember then you can just use guard edge in such strong attacks instead allowing you to invest the points somewhere else. Thanks to how good are guard edge and guard reload, it is usually wasterful go for an evade window build. Evade window is still a nice thing to have if it comes for free in armor or charm. Wirebug Whisperer as mentioned is a must-have in any gunlance build that doesn't go for full melee damage. The usefulness of having 3 bugs and being able to have guard edge ready at any time is priceless. With 3 bugs and evade extender you can fly around the map even faster than riding a palamute, combine it with blast dash for long distance air movement. You will totally want one skill to handle sharpness since both normal and wide spend a lot of it in short amounts of time. A few points in handicraft also can bring a weapon from blue to white or green to blue, being the most powerful damage bonus you will get out of a single point. And finally, there are the useful utility skills like Mind's Eye, Part Breaker or Guard Up that are very useful when are useful but totally useless when aren't. For attack skills analysis I recommend you to watch the video I published yesterday about those. In fact, that video origin is this same one when I ended writing enough material to make a whole guide about it. Without more delay, let's get into matters. Headgear. We start with an interesting one. Here Bagel Helm is not clearly the very best option. Bagel Helm only gives you artillery 1, guard 1 and 1 level 2 slot. Its effective skill value, the number of skills and slots that matters, is only 3. And if you are okay with guard 1, its effective value is just 2. There are lots of better or equal options here. The very prime highlight helm I must talk about is Kaiser. 
This is critical I3 and critical boost 1 by itself. When paired with weakness exploit 3, you are getting 65% affinity and plus 5% critical damage with this headgear. You can perfectly go for critical boost 3 with that affinity and will be as good as going for more affinity. Another very interesting helm is Camellius's Mesia. This gives you Mind's Eye 2 and Evade Window 2. This is the best armor with Mind's Eye in the game and has a value of 4. Evade Window is still useful if you aren't running Guard Reload. Yutsushi Mask Chandler is still a very good headpiece with Razor Sharp 2 and Wirebug Whisperer. Has the same value than Bagel Helm. Jura Helm has also the same value as Bagel but has included Offensive Guard that requires a level 3 slot. Baroth Helm is similar also with Offensive Guard and Attack Boost 1. Only worth taking if you are investing in Attack Boost for whatever reason. Lungobi Helm is interesting for the few good ice weapons with ice attack, 1 point of critical eye and a level 3 slot. But I think the Kaiser is a better option, ice attack are level 1 decorations. Finally there is Skull Visage that is unique because the two slots for whatever you want and fortify for free. One of the slots is a level 3 and can be used for handicraft or good luck. You are here trading guard for getting flexibility. Chest Gear Bagel Chest is no doubt the most useless piece of equipment in the set. It only has an effective value of 2 and these skill points are guard up. With just one level of guard up you can do things like absorb a Teostra Supernova with guard edge without chip damage. You will not use this chest. Instead, you have a few options with value effective 3. Kimura Garb has Wirebug Whisperer and Critical I1. This goes together very well with Kaiser Helm. Diablos's chest is the one piece of armor you will use if you want Guard 5. Comes with Guard 2 and Offensive Guard. Toby's chest with Mind's Eye. One point of Critical Eye and one level 3 slot is the prime armor if you want Mind's Eye. This with Camellia's helm goes very well together. Droth Mail is excellent for water gunlances like the Almudrin 1. It has one level 2 slot, one level 1 and two water attack points. Kushala armor is an interesting one. If you get three pieces you gain super recovery, skill that allows you to recover all health. The chest is one is the most obvious one to use because of how bad chests are in general. This gives you diversion and recovery speed in one level slot, so is not that bad. I have no use for Elucanth chest but with critical element and two critical eye is the perfect option if you want critical element. All Nudrin chest gives you razor sharp too, is not optimal with effective value too but can be convenient while you craft the decorations. Finally, Vake Mail is your 2 slots equipment piece with 1 level 3 slot. Remember that Toby has Mind's Eye and Critical Eye. If you don't want any of those, this is the one armor to use. The Arms Here Bagel Arms are almost unbeatable with Guard Up, Load Shells and 2 level 2 slots of your choice. Even ignoring guard up this has value 3 that is top notch. But still, there are some arms worth considering. Tigrex arms are godlike for a green sharpness weapon. Bludgeoner 2, Mind's Eye and 1 level 3 slot. This is a must use for something like corn popper gunlets. Kaiser is only an option if you have a blast or fire weapon. You are trading off guard up for Teostra Blessing 1 that is a 5% extra blast or fire. Kushala arms are good if you are aiming for super recovery. Agitator 2 gives you 5% affinity and plus 8 raw winative. Sinister gauntlets are your best source of handicraft with 2 points and 1 extra slot. Worth giving up guard up considering how hard is having level 3 slots for handicraft. Anja Vambraces have slugger 2 and attack boost 2. The best source for slugger and attack. If you only want slugger for something more focused in shelling, Use Bagel's Braces instead. The Belts Bagel Belt is once again almost unbeatable with Guard 1, Load Shells 1 and 2 Level 1 slots. I only have two options that could replace it. Narga Kuga Belt is a trade-off between Guard and Critical Eye for the same value Sporting Evade Extender 2, Critical Eye 1 and 1 Level 1 slot. Kushala Belt comes with Handicraft and Recovery Speed. This is the second piece you always take after the chest because how useful handicraft is in this moment. The legs. Bagel once again has dominance with artillery 2, guard 1 and 1 level 3 slot. Level 3 slots are precious because handicraft here and this is tough to replace. Once again, Kushala legs come with handicraft. The trio of Kushala chest, belt and legs are the best ones if you want super recovery. 
And finally, the only other piece of armor with value for our ingot legs with critical I2 and attack boost 3. A shoddy trade considering how good is Kaiser Helm for critical eye and that is very hard to max attack boost and critical eye at once. Anything else consists in giving up guard without getting more value. And this is all. Compare with the initial version of the game and you will see how much the usable armor pieces have been reduced. You are pretty much forced into using bagel belt and legs. The arms have very specific options if you want to lose guard up. The only true flexibility without a trade-off is the chest. And the head has very excellent options for those matches where guard one is enough. At least this is not as boring and dull as Fatalis armor in Monster Hunter World. That was truly depressing regarding build options. This is all. Do you think I'm missing any important armor piece? With almost every skill having craftable decorations there are not much forced bad armors as before. Thanks goodness. Anyways, let me know in the comments. I will share later a spread listing these armor pieces. And as always, remember to subscribe if you want more of this. See you in the hunt.